Back row of ministry, the world premiere. Mr. Mockty coming at you live and direct. Let's talk about a specific type of black man. And this black man has been around for a long, long time. And the thing is about this specific type of black man is sometimes he plays a game that he doesn't understand and that he really doesn't belong in. And no matter how much he tries to be in the circle, he'll never be allowed in the circle. So, Charlemagne the God here, or Charlemagne the Fraud, or the Broad, as I like to call him. I, I prefer Charlemagne the Broad. Goes on to Anderson Cooper's show. And for those that don't know who Anderson Cooper is, <coughs> let's talk about Anderson Cooper's circle. Anderson Cooper is a Vanderbilt. If you know where Vanderbilt University is, you know those are Anderson Cooper's people. Gloria Vanderbilt billionaires. So that's Anderson Cooper's people. So this man comes from money. This man comes from a very elite circle. This man is a part of the elites. American elites. That's the circle that his family runs with and that's his bloodline. In the middle we got Donald Trump and we know Donald Trump's father built himself up. He was an immigrant too. So, yes, America is a country built from immigrants, except for the ones who didn't ask to be here. But Trump's dad is German. They're German immigrants. They were the Trumps at one point. And we already know that he rolls with the high-level checkerboard boys, a.k.a. the Scottish Rite Freemasons. Charlemagne ain't in that circle. And this is proven when Laura Trump went on the show and the question was asked about uh, Dick Schumer and Trump, and Trump didn't own Dick Schumer for years, you know, many, many, many years. So, yeah, they can talk about each other like dogs because they're both checkerboard boys. They're both high-level checkerboard boys. They're in a certain circle. They're brothers. So, yeah, they can make certain comments about each other. You know, that's how they talk. But you see... That that Charlemagne didn't understand why they were able to do that, or why Dick would laugh about uh, laugh with Trump because you know he keeps saying Trump is a, a threat to democracy. And then Laura, if you saw that interview on the Breakfast Club when he said that Laura Trump, she was just dealing with DJ Envy. She was not really playing Charlemagne no attention. And when he said that, she really realized that he don't know what's going on. He does not know what's going on. And that's what I'm talking about. Negras who try to fit in circles or get conned into games that they should never be a part of. And Prince said it best. Follow prophecy. Sometimes don't have a dog in a fight, especially if you're trying to build a platform. So Charlemagne and them had a platform where they could have Donald Trump. They, you could have any politician you want on your show, but you have to be neutral. A journalist has to be neutral. And you got a lot of these niggers going out here pandering to a party, pandering to a party system, pandering to a game that they don't understand. These parties are birds of the feather. They're no different. A Democrat and a Republican is the same hypocrisy. They're the same, they're the same entity. That's why they can go to that dinner and make jokes because at the end of the day, they're navigating the game. It's their game. They can play it how they want to play. Trump is the guy they want to be the last president. He's chosen just like anybody else. And they'll manipulate you into voting for these people. Remember I talked about voter manipulation as a psychological game. I'll make you vote. Yeah, you'll go through the process, but I'm going to manipulate you into voting for who I need you to vote for. So, Charlemagne is convinced that Trump is... Adolf Hitler, and he's a fascist, and oh my goodness, man, he's a dictator. Uh, 
he's the president of the United States. He's whatever they want and need him to be. Whoever the elites of the world need him to be. But you're on TV, you're going back and forth with Anderson Cooper about things that the person who was on your show, the other candidate, said at a press conference that she was told to have and say these things. I told my friend this, and and I, I was really clear with it. And guys like Charlemagne, Spike Lee, Mr. Do the Right Thing, who get on TV to do the wrong thing, uh, D.L. Hughley's of the world need to understand. They will never let a goddamn Indian be the president of the United States. Once again, they will never... Let a goddamn Indian be the president of the United States. Got to be some hella circumstances. I just did a video on Nikki Haley. Is she possible, this Indian candidate? I don't know. But right now, they ain't having Hindu Johnny be the president or Hindu Jane be the president of the United States. Not going to happen. That office is still controlled and ran by bloodlines. And Trump is in the bloodline. Is Kamala in the bloodline? I believe she is. I believe she is through her father, not her mother, because her mother's a Hindu. She's a part of the caste system out there. They could be Christians. I don't think they're Christians because I don't think they're Christians. I think they're Hindus. But it's got to be through her father and her father's people. But the thing with the father is is he all Hindu? Is he a Indian? He could be Christian, a Christian Indian out there in Jamaica. There's a lot of Indians in, in Jamaica. Trinidad, Barbados. There's a lot of Indians out there in the West Indies. So that's where her ties could come. But no, nah, that it wasn't going to happen. So Charlemagne gets on Anderson Cooper's show, the Vanderbilt show, and he just acts a plum fool. And he had an opportunity because Anderson Cooper brought him on the show just to ask him about Kamala and the CNN Town Hall and what he thought about some of her answers. That's all they brought on the show for. But that's the other part of the game that Charlemagne wasn't understanding. Why did CNN get so hard on her? Why were the tough t questions so tough? Because she ain't been getting asked no questions. Charlemagne didn't ask him a little tough question. He just shut on the show... When he did the interview with her, he said, well, he's just a fascist. He just, it's, it's, a president going to be whatever they want, they're going to be. But when you're in an election season and you have all sorts of people supporting this person and you just don't understand why, is it that you don't understand why or you you just don't want to? Is it you don't or you don't want to? Because bottom line is Kamala Harris is not a black woman. She is an Indian. They don't claim black. They are very disrespectful to black people. And she probably one of those type of people. Anytime a person gets on a stage and is asked what mistakes you've made and can I tell you there's a problem with that person. And Charlemagne should know that. But Charlemagne got his own issues from the past we find out. Has the DNC helped him with that? Kind of gloss over his past as long as he puts out their talking points whenever they need him to? Has he sold his soul to the DNC, a party that's pretty much going to be destroyed? That's where we're headed. The Diddy Party, the end of the DNC, the relationship between Puff Daddy and Kamala Harris is Clarence Avant. That's the relationship between these two people. So we're seeing the destruction of the Democratic Party and the Diddy Party focusing on the two Howard University alumnus, if you see the ritual. So Charlemagne the God does not see this. And he gets on the show and, oh, y'all being too hard on her by asking her questions that any politician should be able to answer and trying to play the card of she's black, she's black, she's black 
y'all are always hard on black people. She's a woman, so you're hard on her for that. You know, a bunch of bullshit. A bunch of bullshit. So, Charlemagne the Fraud, or the Broad, slams CNN for bullshit Trump coverage. Nobody's had on honest conversation about Donald Trump since 2016. And he's just going on and on and on. He took no prisoners during an appearance on CNN's uh, Anderson Cooper 360 on Thursday night, damning the network coverage of Donald Trump. MSNBC loved Donald Trump. They loved talking about him like a goddamn dog. And what he called fascist statements and tendencies and the double standards that seem to apply to Kamala Harris in the impassioned remarks series of remarks. In a clip has gone viral on social media, Charlemagne, a popular pop cast and co-host, or uh, ex-host of the um, Breakfast Club, nationally syndicated radio show, The Breakfast Club, asked by host Anderson Cooper about Trump's plan to appear on the Joe Rogan show, which he's going to be on Joe Rogan. He was he did that the other day. I think they should keep calling Donald Trump a fascist, Charlemagne replied. He continued to... And I think that Americans need to keep looking at the rhetoric of Donald because I don't know why why we're even thinking about electing somebody who's talking about putting people in camps. <clears throat> I don't know where, why we're talking, why we want to elect somebody who's talking about mass de- deportation. I don't know why we're having this conversation about somebody who wants to terminate the Constitution and overthrow the results of election. Aren't we supposed to be a patriotic country? Whenever somebody like Colin Kaepernick takes the knee, blah, blah, blah. Oh, that's so unpatriotic. But the guy, but but a guy can say what he wants to terminate the Constitution, overthrow the results of an election, and nobody cares. That's Charlemagne going off. He's going off. He's going to stand up for Kamala because nobody cares. Trump can say and do whatever he wants to do. And nobody cares. In accordance to to Charlemagne. Let me answer the question for Charlemagne. No, they don't care, Charlemagne. Why should they? It's their game. It's the checkerboard game. You're not a checkerboard boy. And you're playing a game that's going to cost you more than just your job. Watch what, watch and see what happens to Charlemagne the fraud as we move forward after this election. All the skeletons going to come out of his closet. All his skeletons going to come out of the closet. Because you don't go on their show and disrespect them and tell them what they should be doing. It's their show. It's their game. He want the game to be real. He want people like Kamala to be real people who really care about people of color or black people or black Americans. No, she don't. Charlemagne and took money. He brought Angela Rhee on that show, probably took money too. He came on with every talking point the DNC told him to, to, to have and he made a fool of himself. He made a fool of himself. Because who, who does he speak for? Black American voters? Americans? Who is he speaking for? And that becomes the problem when you want your opinion to be everybody else's opinion. Did Donald Trump have the right to say something about the last election? Yeah, I would have said something too. Shit seemed very suspicious. I would have said something too. Yes, he had the right to say something. But outside of that, was it a part of the checkerboard boys um, ritual? Yes, it was. Manipulate you into voting the way they need you to vote. Biden them got in the office. Totally fucked everything up, which they did. They just let everybody come up in here. Think about the flow of fentanyl. Fentanyl was here, but the amount of fentanyl that's here now was not here. It was not here. That shit is out of control now. Going into the pandemic, that's when those numbers start to increase and they got out of control after that. Go to Chicago. You got Tent City and Roberto Clemente Park. I'm still trying to figure out, you know, what those people are going to do for the wintertime. 
because it's Tent City out there. What are they going to do when the snow starts falling? What did they do last year when the snow started falling? I'm, I'm unclear. You got Venezuelan gangs going into cities with other gangs about to start wars. That shit is real. It's real at this at this point. It's real. It's going to get very violent in some of these cities unless you get some of this stuff out. Can the Kamala get in there? You got gang violence. You got warfare. You gonna have everything from the rooter to the tutor. More migrants, cause she don't care. World war escalation faster than you're gonna get it. Like I say, we still gonna have world war. Don't get it twisted. But the escalation would have been faster. Because, you know, they have no respect for her. The Project 2025 people endorse her. Remember where their endorsement is. Remember where their endorsement is. And let me see if I can find that. For those who now suddenly, remember how they went cold turkey on Project 2025? All right, so career politician Mickey Edwards endorsements of, of Kamala Harris has drawn strong backlash on social media and one of the latest examples of a Republican going against the grain and has stirred up a nest of misinformation online. Edwards is a lifelong conservative and a longtime Oklahoma legislator and a funding trustee of the Heritage Foundation, though he, ha he hasn't been involved with the group since the 1970s. So... They tied him into the Heritage Foundation, the Heritage Foundation, the checkerboard boys ultimate of America. Probably a bunch of Jesuits who were the writers of um, Project 25, Project 2025, the Heritage Foundation itself. So he was down with that little clique. So he runs and endorses Harris. So the first thing they say is, oh, is um, Project 2025, the Heritage Foundation endorsing her? Like I say, the Heritage Foundation is already, Project 2025 has already been started. Certain things are a part of Project 2025. The, the real ID, that state's ID that everybody got to get called a real ID, that's a part of Project 2025. So they've already started Project 2025. It's an elite project that they want to run to see how it works. And there's a lot of part, moving parts in, in it. You got to read it. It's 900 pages. It's not a, a Trump project. It's not a Kamala project. It's an elite project. So that's what I mean by running in circles and not understanding the circles that you're in. But Charlemagne made a real live fool of himself. He made a real live fool of himself on that show. Because he don't know the game. And going back to why they were so hard on her, why Anderson Cooper was so hard, because she didn't go to that dinner. She dissed the most powerful entity in the world, the Catholic Church. She crossed an ultimate line. They would have kept asking a softball question until she crossed that line. And then they manipulated her after that. The general comes out with the Atlantic report. They give it to her. Oh, go say this. And her dumb ass runs out there and says that and makes a big buffoon of herself. Somebody gave her that and told her to do that. That's the Catholic Church manipulating Anderson Cooper, the Vanderbilt Catholic, does what he's told to do. Ask her questions. We want tough questions asked to her now. Because who the fuck is she to diss the Catholic Church? Who the fuck is she to diss the Roman Empire? But that's what she felt she could do. That's her arrogance. That's her narcissism. Because she don't understand the game. 
She didn't understand why all them can sit in there and crack jokes. She showed that she can't be a part of that circle. And that's why ain't no Indian going to be up in that room. Because they don't even know how to go into the room. Barack Obama went into the room. Cracked jokes for everybody else. Understood the game. But she don't understand the game. Just like dumb niggers like Charlemagne. They don't understand the game they're trying to play. But he going to find out. Oh, Charlemagne going to find out. Watch how Charlemagne's career gets destroyed. Watch how all his dirt pops back up on him. And new dirt. Because he think he's somebody. I mean, he's nobody and nothing in a game he shouldn't have never played in the beginning. When them folks came to him and tried to offer him money like Umar Johnson said they were doing, and these niggers was out there taking it, and he just proved to me on that on that day he took it. Because Anderson Cooper and him was cool. Anderson Cooper was trying to show him the journalism game. But he wanted to play the DNC game. And going there and diss the man. And he didn't hear what Anson told him to his face. Well, the thing I'm not going to be is MSNBC and have these uh, stooges out here with talking points on my show. Told him to his face. You ain't never come back on here again. And he didn't even pick up on that. He didn't even pick up on that part. Black folk. Don't get yourself conned into situations or right checks your ass can't cash. Don't get yourself caught up in politics, man. Politics is funny, it's amusing, but at the end of the day, it's their game. It's not your game. We got our local elections that we can battle at that level. But if you ain't got no checkerboard board credentials, you ain't no Vanderbilt, you ain't a part of the Holy Catholic Church, you ain't part of the universal elite, you ain't got no place higher than local elections. Because when you start playing these games, when you start playing these games, you get out of your league. You make a fool of yourself. You look stupid. He looked dumb to Laura Trump when she was on his show. When he didn't understand how Chuck Schumer and Donald Trump can crack jokes on each other. She looked like, damn, this motherfucker don't know what the fuck going on. He just talking. And she stopped paying him attention and stopped paying attention to DJ Envy, who she probably didn't mess around with. But he don't know. At the end of the day, y'all, the elite rule this world. They pick your candidates just like they pick Kamala. They put them up there. They serve their purpose. Kamala's purpose was simple. Destroy the Democratic Party. We're tired of the two-party system. We want to change. We need some chaos. Let's destroy it. Work done. As I said, by this weekend, when certain um, states start early elections, the, the election is over. We start voting today. It's over. That's going to be based on that CNN town hall that she bombed at. And with Caucasian voters, the biggest thing that they looked at out of that was the person who don't make mistakes. The person that can't admit that they were wrong. At the end of the day, the bottom line is she's just not that bright. She's not a good politician. And it's not for everybody. That's why she dropped out in 2020. Well, 2019. She didn't even make it to Iowa. Because she's not a good politician. When she gets pressed, this is what you get. Same thing happened again. You got to be ready for this type of game. So, no, they're not supposed to, oh, let me pat you on the head. Oh, soft kitten. No, we're supposed to go hard in the paint. This politics is very nasty. It's very dirty. And all that, oh, she's so black and you're treating black. Shut up, Charlamagne. You sound like a goddamn fool because you are a fool. And you about to find out what happens when you sell your soul to some of these devils and then they disappear on your ass and leave you out there in the water with no fucking line. You shouldn't have got yourself involved in this, boy. You had your own thing going. You were doing good. But you tried to play in a league that you wasn't built for. Now your ass about to find out. Keep running around here talking about Trump's a fascist, Trump's this, all this bullshit that's pushing him 
closer and closer to the White House. The more you say it, the, the closer it gets pushed. And remember, there are people in the black community that are voting for Trump, so that you're pushing them closer and closer. I hope you felt good about getting on CNN and defending the Indian who don't give a damn about you. Who don't give a damn about your people in South Carolina. Hope you're very proud of yourself. You, you, you stood on something. What the fuck it was, I have no idea. Because boy, you don't know the game. Mr. Mokti, Back Row Ministry, Peace and Hair